Mr. Rankin. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. My name is Murray Rankin. I'm the official opposition critic on national revenue. Today, New Democrats are calling on the Conservatives to remove all sections related to the intergovernmental agreement to implement the U.S. FATCA, the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, from the budget bill, the omnibus budget bill, and to delay its passage until the agreement can be properly studied. FATCA would allow for Canadian governments to provide the U.S. government with sensitive personal information, sensitive financial information, on approximately one million Canadians, despite, despite broad opposition and serious concerns that the agreement is deeply flawed and will violate the privacy and constitutional rights of Canadians, the Conservatives are charging ahead and attempting to pass this as part of the omnibus budget bill. The timelines for FATCA have been very short indeed. The implementation agreement was negotiated behind closed doors. It was announced that the agreement was signed on February 5th, and now, five, three months later, we are here. The public was given just 30 days for any kind of comment, and now it's been pushed through as part of this mammoth omnibus budget bill. Given the complexities and the implement implications of the agreement, we think this is irresponsibly fast. And it has become increasingly clear through departmental briefings and committee appearances that the government just doesn't understand fully the intended and unintended consequences of this agreement. In addition to the very real legal concerns that will likely result in constitutional challenges to this law, the government has failed to do a proper cost estimate. When the NDP members of the Finance Committee asked a few weeks ago, we found that the uh, Conservatives hadn't even bothered to cost FATCA at all. Last week at Finance Committee hearings on the budget, they said they'd finally asked the CR CRA to do a cost estimate, but it's a lowball estimate. It's simply an estimate. Equally important, perhaps, there was no estimate of the cost to the banks. It's simply unacceptable. So we're urging the government to slow the process down and remove FATCA from the budget so we can study this as is required to do the proper job that Canadians demand of us. Good morning. My name is Nathan Cullen. I'm the uh, finance critic for the official opposition to Democrats. On the three most important P's, the government has failed. Respecting the privacy and protecting the privacy of Canadians. On the price, the government has no idea what the cost is of implementing this agreement. And on process, using another massive omnibus bill to push through this piece of tax treaty, the government has failed Canadians once again. Il n'y a aucune justification pour inclure cette entente dans un projet de loi omnibus de 359 pages. Cette entente pourrait nuire à une million de Canadiennes et Canadiens, en plus d'avoir aucun lien avec le budget. Bill C-31, this massive omnibus bill, to implement the U.S.-Canada Intergovernment agree Agreement on FATCA, and also to grant the Minister of Nation National Revenue sweeping powers to make any regulation that they deem necessary to carry out the agreement. Conservatives have thrown up their hands when it comes to protecting the privacy of dual citizens. With the Im implementation of the Intergovernmental Agreement, this government is putting the privacy of a million Canadians in jeopardy. Nous savons qu'il y a Des fortes chances que FATCA entre en conflit avec la loi sur la protection des renseignements personnels et documents électroniques, la loi sur la protection des renseignements personnels, ainsi que d'autres lois. This intergovernmental agreement also departs significantly from the existing information sharing arrangement between Canada and the United States by introducing expensive enforcement of foreign sovereigns' extraterritorial tax jurisdiction, and by doing so in a fundamentally non-reciprocal manner. There is no reciprocal agreement to find on the other side of the border. FACA a aussi des problèmes de compatibilité avec certains traits fiscaux déjà signés par le Canada et les États-Unis. It also appears to bypass rather than meet the data protections afforded under the Personal Information Protection and Electronics data Documents Act, PIPIDA for short. The privacy concerns regarding FATCA become even more pressing when you consider that the Privacy Commissioner 
just last week said that there is a lack of transparency and fundamental accountability gap when it comes to how and why government agencies access private information. The CRA in particular, the Canada Revenue Agency, has had a raft of problems when it comes to protecting Canadians' privacy, private financial information. Now they're making a bad problem even worse by opening up the door to Washington. We are calling on the Conservatives to acknowledge the concerns with the U.S. Foreign Tax Account Compliance Act and to agree to remove it from Bill C-31 so that we can properly study it and understand it. Il faut que FATCA soit soustrait du budget afin de l'étudier comme il le faut. You have to understand the process that we're in right now at the Finance Committee. We're getting some minutes to hear from witnesses, to hear it, ask questions, and then vote on this massive tax arrangement with our largest trading partner. If the government were so proud of such a deal, certainly it would be a standalone piece of legislation affecting the privacy and rights of almost a million Canadians deems that it would be given proper and due process. So on process, on price, and on privacy, we believe this agreement and the way the Conservatives have done it have failed Canadians. We're now open for some questions. Are you opposed to this type of uh, sharing in general, or is it just the way it's been put forth and not given enough time to study? You know, we understand the need for sharing. We understand the need to go after tax uh, cheats in different tax havens, but no, not many people I talk to think that Canada is a tax haven. And so information sharing makes sense. This agreement, done behind closed doors with minimal consultation, isn't the answer. Canada has uh, approved it. The government of Canada has I think the only other major, if I could say, uh, country is Denmark. Why the rush to, to do this? Why the rush indeed? The Americans have a self-imposed deadline that for, apparently we saw just last week that there was they pushed it back for a number of other countries in the world that aren't going to be able to comply because it's so complicated. Because they haven't got the, the, they haven't got the bugs kicked out of this uh, at all. And so as a consequence, Canada is one of those 30 countries that has some kind of a deal right now. There's 20 others or something for which they're waiting. And we are just, as Canadians, caught in the crossfire. Our Conservative government chose one or two options off the shelf, implemented it to much fanfare with little consultation. And some of our leading constitutional lawyers, Peter Hogg, for example, has said this is categorically unconstitutional. So there's going to be costs in litigation that Canadians are going to have, pay, have to pay for. And it's those of us who use banks and credit unions that are going to have to pay the fees to implement that, not just the million people who happen to be dual citizens or otherwise. It's all of us that are going to pay as taxpayers for the retooling of the CRA, as people who have our money in financial institutions. They're not going to just be able to allocate it to individuals. It's all of us that are paying for this. Why? Just, just a small reference in terms of Canada's process with, the, with Washington. Compare the lack of effort on dealing with FATCA to the massive effort on lobbying for Keystone. The Canadian government has spent millions of dollars in all hands on deck in Washington at our embassy and at every forum they can find to lobby for a pipeline that's going to export 40,000 jobs. Here we have an agreement that's going to affect a million Canadians, affect as, affect as Murray says, the taxpayer and anybody who uses a bank or credit union in Canada, it's going to cost money. And the effort has been absent and very last minute where Canada was one of the last G7 countries to arrive at some sort of arrangement with the U.S. It feels like the, they hit the panic button, got some small concessions, we think, on our RSPs, but yet we don't know. We asked that at, at briefings and at committee, if you have a, a Canadian who's married to someone the Americans deem as American, which is a question, are their RSP contributions also exposed to American taxation? The Canadian government doesn't know. So we deem this to be a, a significant problem for Canadians and a government that should stand up for us. Yeah. The, the withholding tax is 30% thing that it was my understanding they had to meet the deadline because the alternative was I guess more right. it was a threat yeah it was a threat do you, do you think that's an empty threat or negotiable or? well you know your guess is as good as mine as someone just indicated we pushed the deadline back for other aspects why couldn't they push the deadline back for this at some point the Americans have used threats and Canadians the Canadian government has simply rolled over and said sure whatever and there's no reciprocity yet. As Nathan said, there's no agreement in the United States like this that's ready right now. So it's really, we're helping the Americans at great cost to, to us, to our sovereignty, the constitutional rights of our citizens, to their privacy. But for what? For perhaps an empty threat? We don't know. So one, one quick thing on the constitutionality. To, to show how uh, little the Conservatives were aware of this, they didn't even ask for constitutional advice from, their, from our own department as to whether this was legal. We, we know the, the problems the Conservatives have with the courts, but they can't see, simply uh, continue to ignore the Constitution and hope that it just works out in the end. Ask them how that went on the dawn. If this has got constitutional concerns, it worries us 
that the conservative government didn't bother to check with the experts to see what implications there were. When we asked on briefings, what advice did you get from lawyers here in Ottawa as to whether this is legal or not, to give up the privacy of so many Canadians to a foreign sovereign state? And they said, well, we didn't seek that advice. That seems to me utterly irresponsible, and as Murray has said, is exposing us to court cases, exposing all of us to court cases that follow down the line, which I'm sure will be launched, because it affects so many people. Here's one last piece for those that don't follow FATCA. Most Canadians uh, who came from the U.S. had given up their U.S. citizenship, become Canadian, and voting in Canadian elections, pay taxes in Canada, may be deemed by Washington to still be American. To become un-American is like a negative option billing. You have to work hard. Some Canadians, we now hear stories, who were born to an American parent in Canada may be exposed to taxation by the U.S. All of these things are worrisome for us. The last piece I'd say about privacy is Canadians that will have their banking information given to Washington will not even be notified under this agreement. The CRA, the Canada Revenue Agency, doesn't have to tell you that they've given your banking information to the IRS under this agreement unless you go through some arduous process through the privacy commissioner. That seems insane. I mean, the Canadians won't find out about what the implications are for them until it's already real and already happening. We have some concerns as well about crossing the border. There are some amendments standing on the U.S. statutes that if a so-called American is deemed to have been in arrears on their taxes, they may be prevented from crossing the U.S. border. Again, when we ask questions of the Canadian government, have you thought this through? What if this is going to mean for average, every ordinary, everyday Canadians? They say, we don't know, but we signed this agreement anyways. And now we're ramming it through a 359-page omnibus bill. Canadian Bankers Association about this? Yeah. They, I, they had a press release on it that seemed yeah. like that they, they were opposed to it, but sort of made, sure it seem, <laughs> but yeah. seemed, made it seem inevitable because of that 30%? I think withholding. they're concerned because of their assets in the United States, the 30% withholding tax obviously would have a great implication for our our, our banks that do business on both sides of the of the border. They seem to has, uh, uh, have taken the position that FATCA was a terrible thing in the first place, but this was as good as the Canadian government could have got. That's how do we know? We had 30 days for review and comment of this. That's all we had with little information. We don't know the costing. They really don't have any information back of the envelope calculations. The total cost of this, the bankers, I think, should be very concerned about, but they don't know. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. Can I take your bill? Thanks.